Well, thanks for logging on to another edition of the Buyer's Guide. Thanks for all the great feedback so far. And tonight we're going to be looking at a spotted fin mix. It's a mix that I'd never ever had used before, not even anything remotely like this until I thought about filming this series. And the mix we're going to be looking at tonight is the milled betaine pellets. Well, I openly admit that I'd never really used a mix like this before. I always assumed that this sort of a mix was very similar to a, a, a halibut type mix. And the reason why I've not used many halibut mixes is purely because, you know, I would really only use mixes like that if I was fishing on rivers for barbel and, and that sort of thing. And obviously, as a lot of you know, the venues that I fish tend to be more bream orientated and silverfish orientated. And I never felt that a mix like that would fit into um, my style of fishing. The mix we're going to be looking at tonight is the milled betaine pellets. And so I was really looking forward to um, using and mixing this mix because I wanted to see what it was all about. It's a spotted fin mix. And as with all spotted fin uh, packaging, it probably will give us an idea about what the mix is all about. So let's take a quick look at the package just to get an idea of what this mix is actually designed for. Always very distinctive packaging with spotted fin, as we've seen before. And the bags come with um, resealable seals on them as well. So if you don't use all the mix in one go, you can seal it up and that keeps your bait nice and fresh. Now this one's already been opened and that's because I managed to get out and fish with this mix a few weeks ago. Admittedly, I want to try it in a different, slightly different scenario, but shortly after we've done a couple of tank tests and see how it mixes up, I'll show you some footage from that day. Um, but this mix is, um, it's milled B10 pellets as it says. It's made from pure milled coarse pellets. All right, so this is all the information we're getting off the bag. As with most ground baits now, the ones that are on the shelves, just have a look at the bag. It's amazing how many do kind of give you an idea and a feel for what the mix is all about before you actually buy them. Okay, so it's pure milled coarse pellets. It's rich with fish attractants, oils and proteins. Now we might see those oils when we start mixing it up because sometimes oily mixes, you can see them actually sticking to your hand and mixes like that can be really good at binding and you know, and for forming balls of ground bait if that's the way that you're gonna be fishing. So we'll, we'll get to see that when we start mixing it. Um, and then underneath it says, can be used 100% as a mix or added to any other ground bait. A mix like this, as soon as I opened it, it's got an incredibly strong smell. Um, for, but for those people that haven't seen this sort of a mix before, I can only kind of compare the smell to, it's not like a halibut smell, it, it's almost along the lines of um, salmon fry. It's not the same as salmon fry, but it's that sort of, of flavour that's coming off it, all right? And I dare say that will get stronger when we start mixing it, okay? So again, back to the packaging, it gives us a how to mix guide on there, just like all, with, all the spotted fin mixers. Um, slowly add water to bind ground bait, leave to soak, riddle, and then add more water as required, okay? So just add your water little and often, as with all your ground baits, okay? Um, on the back, just like with all the spotted fin mixers, we've got a quick list there in several languages. In English there, it's got fish meal in there, so we know it's a fish meal mix. Uh, wheat, soya, fish oils. Again, it's saying that the oils are in there as well. Rape oil. I think we're gonna see this when we start mixing it. But as regards the list of ingredients, it's certainly not as extensive as some of the, some of the other spotted fin mixers that we've looked at. Um, so, you know, it's a, a smaller ingredient list, basically. And we've also got a batch number on there as well, which I think is great. You've got a batch number on there of 1068 and a best before of March 2021. Okay, so it's got a really nice long shelf life. Something that, you know, even if it's just for reassurance when you buy it off the shelf in local tackle shop, you get an idea of how um, how fresh it is or uh, what kind of time scale's gone since it was actually mixed. So. This mix, I'm gonna mix it up now. We can have a look to see how flexible it is. Can we over wet it? Um, does it bind well? Is it oily? Are you getting oils coming off on your hand? All that sort of thing. And then when we've done that, I'm gonna pop it in the tank and we're gonna have a just see how it performs in a ground bait feeder underneath the water. And like I say, I did get out to fish with this mix um, on a local fishery to where I live. So that'll be coming up shortly. So let's get some water and let's get it mixed up. Okay, so it's a nice resealable bike, which is great. Look how dark that is, really dark. I mean, you can obviously see that through the window of the bag, but it's, it's shining a little bit, so you probably can't get a, a true sense of how dark it is, but that is really, really dark green 
Okay, as you can see, let's get some more in there. Let's mix it properly. That's it. It's really dark, really super fine. As you can see, feed wise, you know, there aren't any lumps of particles of feed in there. So it's really, really fine. Really, really smells strong. Okay, let's get some water added to it and let's see how it mixes up. I'm not gonna add too much because there's only a little bit, there's not much ground out there. As always, it's gone darker already, just like ground baits do when you add water to them. That's a really, really dark green now. Really dark. It's almost like it, you know, like that dark green halibut colour. That's really super dark. Okay. Now I don't think I need to add much more than that at this stage. Okay. Like I say, what I'm going to do is with this mix, I'm going to do exactly the same as I've done with all the mixers in this series. I'm going to give this exactly 10 minutes and then revisit again. I might have to add some more water to it and just see what the consistency is like after that period. Okay, well, 10 minutes has gone. I've just had to add a little bit more water to it. I mean, it, quantity wise, I mean, I haven't mixed much anyway. There's certainly nowhere near enough there for a session, but as you can see, that's really nice, dark, dark green really really fine okay so the first test I guess is just to see how it binds now I can just tell by how I mean you could really squeeze that hard into a really hard ball so it's gonna be ideal for bowling in if you are gonna ball it and it means it binds well which might be good in deep, deeper water that sort of thing interestingly I haven't got any of it on my hands look how clean my hand is there I've just mixed that twice um, and there's nothing there you can probably see the shininess now I can, I can tell you that that shininess isn't, it's not from the, the wetness, the moisture, that is from oil, it, it, it feels oily. So, you know, the ingredients list does say that there's oils in here and I can certainly feel that. I mean, I don't know if you can tell by looking at my hands, but so it is oily and that's what's giving it that, you know, that um, I don't want to use the term stickiness, but the oiliness that, that, that helps it bind. And that also gives me the impression that that's not going to break down very quickly either. So that will be a slower breakdown, certainly in colder water. Okay, so let's have a look to see if we can over wet it. Um, some mixes you can, some you can't, because some people like to fish with a, a slop. And sometimes we do over wet the feeder, uh, the ground bait mix when we're fishing with a feeder. So there we go, straight away that's showing me that that can be over wetted. All right, nice and sloppy. There we go. So it's not clumped up in a ball, some ground baits just go into a paste. This one doesn't, so that will allow you to overwet the ground bait if you do want to fish it in that way. Okay, um, so again, you know, it's showing that it's a nice, flexible mix. The one thing that's constantly hitting me is the smell, you know, and, and, and personally, this is something that I don't probably only tend to use in, in warmer waters um, during the summer months. Or, on the flip side of that, I would probably even think about using it when the water was coloured. When fish, fish are relying less on sight to, see, to spot the bait, um, they rely on smell more. And certainly something like this could help the fish find, you, find the feed, you know. Um, so on rivers as well, not only lakes, but yeah, when the water clarity is, is cloudy and coloured, then this could be the nice sort of mix to help the fish find the bait. So, so that's allowing us to overwet it, which is good. I've shown us it's nice and, um, and versatile. So what I'm gonna do now is just with this dry side here, I'm just gonna pop that in a cage feeder and we'll have a look at how it's gonna perform under the water. Well, there are lots of ways of introducing ground bait, obviously. And the clip that I've got from when I went out fishing with this ground bait, I wasn't using a feeder, I was fishing with a pole. So I was introducing this ground bait in a slightly different way. I was putting balls of ground bait in. But for this test in the tank, I'm going to be using a cage feeder, a nice fine wire cage feeder so that the water can get to the ground bait. My predictions, I know you like to hear that sort of thing. I don't think there's going to be any cloud coming off this. I really don't. I don't think there'll be any cloud. I think it'll be quite inert. And I think it'll be quite a slow breakdown as well. So it'll be interesting to see if that does actually happen. Now I'm not going to pack this in too tight because we don't want to be here all night waiting for it to break down. But I'm going to pack that into, you know, the kind of consistency that withstand a decent cast you know a 40 meter cast for example down to a, a, a 10 foot deep swim for example so I'd want that to be intact when it hit the bottom okay so if we pop that in the tank it's really gone dark in color now as you can see we we'll pop that in the tank and let's see how it see how it performs when it goes in I'll put that more into the shot for you there we go and there we go straight away we can see that there's very very little coming off it there's only one or two bits particles coming up 
and a lot of that disturbance is just from where I put the feeder in and I had to move it slightly but there, there we go that's broke down a little bit quicker than what I expected there's virtually nothing coming off it now that I've got to openly admit that is breaking breaking apart and breaking down a little bit quicker than what I expected but there isn't any cloud whatsoever no cloud at all there's just particles there. There's quite a bit of air coming out of it. If you look just above the feeder in the dark shadow, um, you can see how many bubbles are coming off that. I'm looking down on it here and they are really, really tiny, tiny bubbles, really small. So there's quite a bit of fizzing going on, but it's not fizzing from the particles going up in the air, which can sometimes attract small fish and, and give you problems from small fish. But there's no cloud whatsoever there. You know, as you can see, it's just an absolute dead mix. Now, if that's the kind of you know scenario that you want, usually we tend to use an inert mix like this when we're targeting bigger fish, and you don't want the attractions of small fish. This might be the ideal mix for that. If small fish are a problem, for example, because it's a strong mix and because it's inert, you're just kind of trying to stack the odds in your favour of you only catching bigger fish and not attracting the attentions of smaller fish. But as you can see, that is, in fact, that's the deadest mix or most inert mix that we've looked at all week in this series so far. So that's definitely something I'll be making a note of in the diary because that is it's quite a specific mix that and it's very very different from some of the others that we've been looking at. But that is just completely dead. It's just, I mean, I don't think if we left out for you know quite a deal of time, I don't think that ground bait had moved much further from where it is now. So that's it. We've learned something from that. I'm just going to bring the feeder out now just to see if it it kicks up you know some of those particles and see if there is any sort of a cloud that comes off it. There we go. A tiny bit of a cloud, but I, I'd hardly call that a cloud. I don't, I, I wouldn't really call that a cloud. I'll, I'll just call that, that bit where it all puffed up like that. They're the tiny, tiny particles, you know, the really small particles. It's not like a wet cloud like you sometimes get on lots of other mixers. And look at that straight away, within 10 seconds, 12 seconds if that, it's just gone back to an inert mix, a dead mix. And I can see why that's ideal for bigger fish. And this is definitely something that I'll probably be um, using in future on certain venues when I'm only targeting bigger fish. Um, but that, I mean, that is a really inert mix. Yeah, very surprising. What I'm gonna do now is just introduce some of the overwetted ground bait, just to see how that performs while we've got the tank set up, just to see if, even when it's really wet, if a cloud comes off it, or whether it's just gonna go straight to the bottom in a, in a wet lump. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to this, and then we'll see how it performs in the tank. Now that's really wet. That might be a little bit too wet to fish in a feeder, or put it through a feeder, but, but let's see what it does when it goes in. Absolute zero cloud, absolutely nothing. That is really wet, and that's just sitting there now. It's almost like a lump of plasticine. There's no cloud whatsoever. So this is very well suited to, to bigger fish. It's an inert mix. We know it smells strong, but that is just, there's just nothing there. It's just dead. So that for me is an ideal mix for targeting bigger fish and certainly one that you might want to use uh, or could be more effective in, in colored water, you know, if you're going to be using that strong smell. But that's definitely a mix that, I, you know, I would consider that to be a big fish mix. Well, that was interesting. Um, I did actually manage to get out and fish with this ground bait. I went to a fishery not far from where I live, and whilst it was a slightly different scenario from where I now think I should have used it, I did manage to catch a few fish. So here is a video of how I got on with this when I took it out on the bank.
Well, I managed to catch loads and loads of fish that day. It was a thoroughly enjoyable day. It was nice to fish with a pole as well. But, I mean, looking back, since we've kind of looked at this mix even more, the scenario that I used that in, actually on that venue on that day, wasn't quite right. It's, it's certainly not the scenario where I would use this mix. So, that is going to warrant another visit out with this mix. So, I will be revisiting this mix over the next few um, next few weeks where I'll be going out and fishing with it on a feeder and I will be targeting bigger fish because I think that's exactly what this is um, suited for and you know but having said that you know I still went on and caught loads and loads of fish that day I had to cut back on the amount of feed that I was putting in and maybe that was down to the strength of this mix because you know we know sometimes smaller fish like the ones that I were catching I was catching that day don't always necessarily like stronger mixers so that might be why I cut down um, that when I cut down on the amount that I was putting in I started to catch more fish but it was a really enjoyable day and it shows that it does catch fish well this ground bait is one that is available at, at um, Spotted Fin um, stockists if you're not sure where your local stockist is if you go to the Spotted Fin website the address is below for you and there is a store locator there so all you do there is go to the store locator type in your postcode and that will give you a list of all your nearest stockists to you now if you're still struggling to find the ground baits you can actually purchase them direct online from Spotted Fin on their website on the same website the bags, these bags of ground bait are sold in 900 gram bags and the cost of those is $5.99. So, you know, if you're struggling to find a stockist near you, then you can get them online. It's been a really interesting mix to look at this one and if any viewers that are watching this video have used this mix, please comment below so that other viewers can uh, just kind of, uh, you know, hear about your experiences with it and what kind of fish you've been targeting with it. Also, if you are a stockist of this ground bait or you work in a tattle shop or know a tattle shop that's got it, then please comment below and just let other viewers know where they can get hold of it to try it. It's been a really interesting mix for me to look at this one because it's it's very different from a lot of the other mixes that I've used and with what I've seen here and what I experienced on the bank using it, it's certainly a mix that's going to go in my diary for certain scenarios um, because it is quite unique from a lot of the other mixes that we've looked at so far. I hope you've enjoyed this insight into this ground bait. I've certainly enjoyed experimenting with this one because it is slightly different from a lot of the mixes that I've used before. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because that will let me know that you are enjoying these videos and I can continue delivering them to you. I've got literally dozens and dozens of different ground baits to show you and if you're enjoying the series I shall continue to produce them. If you don't want to miss out on any of the videos, just hit subscribe just there. And if you want to see more coaching style in-depth videos then you might want to have a look at my other video channel which was Patreon TV at the link just there and in the bottom corner. So thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow where we're going to be looking at a completely different mix.